Uh, yeah, Coach, and another week, another late in the week situation where you're a little uncertain about if a guy is going to be available to you or not. So uh, can you talk about trying to, you know, kind of work around the whole Jed Wills thing and what impact that has on you right now? Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's part of the deal in 2020. So I don't think anybody flinches at this point. Um, you know, when I heard the news, I was like, okay, yeah, that's that's the way it is. And that uh, our team's really been resilient. In the fact that the next guys, are, you know, steps up and plays well. So, you know, Hub went down, uh, Kendall went down, Hub came in, Hub went down, and, and Nick Harris came in and played well. So we expect if uh, if Jed's not available on Sunday for Kendall to come in and play well in left tackle. So that's the mentality that everybody takes, and it's 2020, so we just go with the punches. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Kay. Our next question goes to Nate Ulrich. Coach, what do you like about Kendall Lamb behind the scenes other than, you know, his ability to catch? You know, the, the work ethic you see, um, you know, he's a smart guy. Um, you know, he's very conscious of what he's doing out there, you know, and, and he does a good job. He did a good job in, his, in through training camp. And, uh, you know, I fully expect him to come in and play at a high level. You know, we're, we're fortunate to have the depth that we do have at the offensive line. And those guys have played well when they've stepped in. We expect nothing less. Thanks, Nate. Doug Lay, Maurice, you're up. Hey, Alex, I know you've been asked a lot of questions about Baker and this kind of thing lately. But on the big list of things that go into the success of a quarterback, where does familiarity and comfort with his coaches and the coaches comfort with that quarterback. Where does that factor in along with all the natural talent and the guys around him and that kind of thing, just knowing each other, how important is it? Yeah, I think it's very important. I think it's, it's all about relationships at every level uh, and building those relationships and building that trust and, and getting to know each other inside and out and knowing, you know, what, what he likes, what he doesn't like. Um, that's a big part of it, you know? And so, you know, just having that transparency of open conversation, a lot of times during the week of how a guy feels about a certain play, those things are, are critical to, uh, to how, how the game's called on Sunday. But uh, you know, I've been proud of the way he's played. Obviously, he's playing at a high level, and, and uh, that's, where he, that's where he should be. We're happy with him. And how long do you think that process really takes to get all the way there? And I know you're still learning all the time, but is it can it take multiple years? Does it take a month? Like, a, like, like, I just, you know, sometimes your coaches and quarterbacks are together for a really long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it takes time. There's, there's definitely uh, um, a time element involved. But, um, you know, the, I think the, the more open he is to coaching, the more, um, you know, we as coaches are open up to his ideas as well. And, and like I said, there's that constant communication and that constant trust that can happen quickly. And I think we see it now. I think uh, Baker really is uh, on the same page as the coaching staff of what we're trying to get done on each, each and every play. And, uh, you know, he's, like I said, he's performing at a high level. So I think we've, we've gotten there. We'll always get to, you know, get closer as time goes along. You know, the Zoom meetings have made, made it tougher and harder. Um, the lack of the off season has made it a little tougher, but um, I think uh, we're, we're, we're getting close to where we need to be. Thank, Thank you, you, Doug. Scott Patrick is next. Hey, Alex, it, it seemed like Jarvis was on the move um, more, you know, pre-snap motion against the Giants. What is it that you like about that? Uh, just to dress his things up. You know, you have to be uh, conscious of where he is. Obviously, he's a, a playmaker for us. So to do the things we can do with him, whether it's bringing him back into the backfield or, you know, motion him across the formation, I think uh, he's going to draw attention. You know, it, it's, it's a big part of, of what we did against the Giants. And it's, it's good to, to get him involved, in, you know, at every level. You know, come back and play some running back for us. He can throw the ball. He can catch the ball. He can run reverses. So. You know, he's a, he's a very talented guy. And the, the more we can use him within the formations um, to draw attention, maybe to, as a decoy or to use him as a, as a point of attack, as a weapon, um, it, gives him, it gives us that versatility. Well, and Kevin always talks about you want to make it simple on the offense and complicated for the defense. Um, but like all that preset motion, does that take a long time to perfect for everybody to get on the right timing? It does. You know, our, our operation, our game day operation is critical. Um, having clean operation, being able to have multiple shifts, multiple motions within the same play. Uh, one, it gets us in a, in a good situation offensively where we'll be able to attack some certain looks. Um, and, you know, at the same time, it, it makes the defense respond. They have to, you know, make calls, change calls, um, you know, change coverage adjustments. So all that is beneficial for the offense. But you have to be able to practice it. You have to be able to do it. And I, I'd say we do it at a high level. That's one of our, our main goals each week is to have a clean operation. And we've been pretty good at it. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Zach.
Jackson, you're up. Hey, uh, I want to ask you about Jed and Nick, both in terms of their overall development, losing the offseason, you know, Jed to a new position, and Nick last week on no notice to a position he hadn't played in years. So just what have those guys done to get better and, and to stay ready? You know, I think first and foremost, they're good football players, you know, and our, you know, our scouting department has done a great job of identifying them as football players first. Um, yeah, it stunted the growth a little bit as far as their development, but uh, – you plug a guy in and tell him to block that guy. You know, if they have the ability to do that, they should be able to get that done. So um, really hats off to, to bringing the right guys in. I mean, really been, been happy with the, all the rookies, especially offensively that, that have, we brought in this past year. They've all contributed and they've, you know, they've done a great job of picking up the offense and, and uh, fitting in or, you know, the, the ability to, to, to start a whole season at left tackle so far has been impressive. Hopefully we'll have Jet Sunday, we'll wait and see. But, um, you know, those guys are good football players. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. We'll go to Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to squeeze in two questions here if I can. Uh, the first one, there was a little clip that was circulating with uh, David Njoku and uh, and Baker Mayfield where, uh, you know, David stumbled there and uh, and Baker instead threw the ball, threw the touchdown pass to Jarvis. Uh, so my question is, uh, I'm guessing that that kind of stuff goes on all the time. That's just the kind of thing and the kind of discourse that probably happens in a football game a lot, or is it more than that? Was Is there some kind of you know, something going on there? And then also, should he have thrown the ball to David? I mean, was David, you know, David was, came open, obviously. Yeah, yeah so, no, that's, that's funny you say that. Um, as I stood and watched that play from behind, I saw the same thing Baker saw. I knew how the play was designed. I knew where we were going with the football and it was David first and Juice second. Um, as soon as I saw David stumble, I got off of David as well and got right to the back line where, where Jarvis was. Um, so well, for starters, you know, the quarterback, things happen quickly, especially in the red zone. So the ability to jump off a read and back onto your second part of that progression is what he did. Um, to David, yeah, he regained balance and he was definitely wide open. But as I watched the play develop the same way that Baker did, I saw the stumble and, and I, I knew we, we were going to have him. But when he stumbled, I immediately put my eyes back to, to Jarvis to see where he was. So, no, I don't think there's anything there. Um, we'll take touchdowns any way we can get him. And Jarvis made a heck of a catch uh, to convert that one. But um, as a quarterback play, like I said, in the red zone, things happen fast and you have to move quickly. Yeah. Okay, good. And then uh, the other thing uh, I just want to ask you, when you look at this is jumping, you know, over to the other side of the, uh, the field a little bit here, but when you look at a player like Sam Darnold and then you compare him to what you guys have done with Baker Mayfield, surrounded Baker with every single bit of talent possible and really great coaching this year. Um, and I'm not saying that Sam doesn't have any of those things, but to watch Sam struggle the way that he is struggling this year, do you feel for young quarterbacks like that? Uh, and how grateful are you that you guys are doing everything that you possibly can uh, to make sure that Baker has whatever he needs to be successful this year. Yeah, Mary Kay, to be honest, I really haven't paid attention to much other than what, who we're playing and what we're doing offensively. So I know he's, you know, it has had struggled, you know, um, but at the same time, you know, there's really no comparison. We're just trying to get our guys ready to play. Um, you know, I, I feel like we are doing a good job as far as offensively of getting these guys coached up and, and they're performing at a high level. But to make a comparison, it would be tough for me, Mary Kay. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Mary Kay. Dan Lobby has our next question. Coach, you had four drives on Sunday night that were 10 plays or more. You had the two 95 yarders. I think the one actually covered 115 yards with the penalties. Uh, when you have that many long drives, I mean, do you just look back on that game and I mean, you're just happy with the, to sustain those drives. And that's nothing new to this last game. We've really been doing a good job of sustaining drives, long drives. And then a lot of that comes down to, you know, converting on third and fourth down, staying on the field. Um, you know, getting first downs on first down, um, being able to move the chains. And uh, it's, it's impressive to put together two 95-yard drives. That's, that's obviously, a, you know, something we'll be able to look back on and reflect, on, you know, how, how we move the ball down the field. But uh, we've done it all year, to be honest with you. We've, we've, we've had a lot of long drives for, for touchdowns. And that's exactly, it's a good offense that's taking everything that's given and then converting on third and fourth down and punching it in the red zone. That's, that's critical. That's really a blueprint to success. Convert on third down, score touchdowns in the red zone. I do want to ask you one more about Jarvis. You mentioned all the things he can do. Did you know he could do all of those things before you got your hands on him? Yeah, well, I knew he could throw the ball really well. You know, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't probably pay att enough attention to the type of route runner he was and the ability to separate uh, versus tight coverage, making tested catches, all of that. But uh, 
I'm pretty sure he hit the Bengals uh, with a with a nice throw <laughs> down the right sideline against us a few years ago. So I obviously knew he could throw it well. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Nate Ulrich, next. Hey, Coach. Austin Hooper uh, coming off that neck injury and then having the game he did against the Giants. What can you say about the way he was able to perform and when he has that efficient day like that in, in the passing attack, how much of a lift is it to you guys? Uh, it's huge. You know, the tight end group as a whole, I think Drew does a great job in that room of getting those guys prepared each week. Um, they've stepped up and made plays all over the field. All three of them made plays. Hoop's a big part of that. Obviously, we can get Hoop going. It takes a lot of pressure off the other guys. And uh, to have him back, that, that was critical. He's a you know, big target for us on third down in the red zone, does a great job um, and blocking in the run game. So getting him back out there on the field, that was that was good for us. Thank you, Nate. We have time for two more, Jake Trotter and Scott Petrick. Jake, go ahead. Yeah, Alex, I don't know if you've had time to review the tape or not, but what grade would you give uh, Wyatt Teller's proposal there at uh, Midfield Stadium? I heard about it. I have not seen it yet. So, uh, you know, anytime you, you have a chance to make a special impact like that and, and do it, it's pretty cool. You know, I congratulated him this morning in our Zoom meeting, but uh, I'll take a look here when we get some time. Um, and another question for you, uh, you know, what kind of confidence does it give you this time of year that you guys have demonstrated you can put up points in a lot of different ways? You're not constrained in necessarily one particular style, um, especially given the matchups that you might face this time of year and the weather kind of unpredictability, especially, you know, in this part of the country. Um, you know, the confidence you have that you guys can win a bunch of different ways. Yeah, I think so. And I think the guys feel that way also. Um, you know, the, the course of the season has really built us for where we are right now. It's grown us into this offense that can throw the ball. We can run the ball. We're all on the same page right now and, and uh, operating at a high level. And I think that, uh, that that happens through the course of the season, really just the ups and downs of the season and growing pains that you go through a season. The bad weather games we had there in a three-game stretch kind of gets you to rely on the run game a little bit more. Obviously, we've run it well this year. And now we've shown that we can come out and throw it well as well. So you always want to play your best football in December. And I feel like offensively, we are, we're getting there. Thank you, Jake. The final question goes to Scott Patrick. Hey, Alex, Joel obviously made the Pro Bowl. Um, so just how well do you think he's played this year? And then the second part of that is, did you feel a lot of other guys on that line um, could have also been Pro Bowlers? I definitely do. I think uh, I, I put our line up against guys you know, across the league. I think we have a very good offensive line. Um, across the board, really. And Joel, uh, you know, anchors that that group up front. His play has been outstanding this year. He's physical in the run game. He's very good in pass protection. You know, he's really a complete player up front. And he's a great leader for us, too. So very happy for him. Uh, like you said, there's a lot of candidates up there that, 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 that could have been pro bowlers in my mind. Just happy to have that group together. I mean, it's a really, really solid group foundation of our offense.